following is a presentation of TFNN. The P Power Trading Hour with your host, David White. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-445-1044. Now, David White. And welcome all to another exciting edition of the Power Trading Hour with me, your humble, lovable, and squeezably soft host. As always, we love to come to you at this time. The following takes place between 2 p.m. and 3 p.m. Oh, what do we have here? Well, we've got a market and... It looks like there is the rumor mill of all rumor mills pushing the market higher today. We'll talk about that in a few minutes. Um, of course, I don't believe rumors, but man, are they pushing this hard uh, off the TV and uh, around uh, Wall Street. So we'll see what it is. I'll tell you what it is in a little bit. It's basically they're selling the sizzle for tomorrow, and uh, we'll get into that. Um, I had one short position uh, in the short-term newsletter. It was basically, I don't know, 20, 30 cents down on a $44 ETF. Um, so basically flat. Got out of it. Just don't know. Kind of a coin flip tomorrow. I don't much believe in rumors. Um, we had Levi Strauss come out as a new IPO. Yeah, been around forever. Not exactly sure why they needed cash. I always worry about that after a company's been around forever and doesn't really need cash, but uh, probably the family uh, wants to get out of it or the, the people that own a lot of the stock. So it does go public. Uh, but, uh, you, you know, is that why they're pushing this so hard today uh, to get it up so they could get the IPO out? Is it so they can get another IPO out? Um, and of course, as far as I know, Washington, D.C. is a sieve. Maybe someone did tell them actually what's going to happen tomorrow. So uh, eh, you just never know. Anyway, volume has not been that impressive. Uh, we're just turning 4.3 billion shares. It's not bad. It's not good. Certainly not anything close to having the 10 billion or uh, almost, yeah, a little over 10 billion shares we had on Friday that look like we could get back up there. If we continue, uh, to uh, get up uh, to the previous size on light volume. You know, I, I thought that the market could had a lot farther to run. We needed to pull back, pull back on light volume, set up a run on heavy volume, probably, you know, maybe in May or in April or something. We never did. We've just kind of stumbled up all the way. Now, the question is, do we stumble up and test the all-time highs on no volume? I mean, we were basically just one rung on the ladder below pushing higher. And uh, maybe it's all it takes. Like I said, we'll get into that in the, at least what their story is. I'm always reticent to believe it. But, man, um, they are thumping the drum on this one today. So we will uh, talk about that maybe in the next segment. Uh, we're going to look at the most hated stocks if this market does go higher. We're going to look at the most shorted and most hated stocks of the last uh, few days and uh, see if there's anything in that. Uh, kind of interesting also to see that uh, no matter what anybody had to say about it, um, Mr. Boeing is only down three bucks. Uh, man, you got to think. Generally, that the wisdom of crowds is better. I didn't get into that yesterday. Maybe we'll talk about that again today, which is, I've done some reading on it. it makes some sense. Uh, but again, I don't know a great deal more than anybody else, other than I've probably spent more time reading about it. Anyway, just down three bucks, which is less than a percent. So if that happened on any other day, much less a day where everybody's telling uh, everybody that the FBI is coming in like Ruby Ridge, um, you never know. But it just seems a lot of self-confidence self, uh, uh, self uh, 
flagellation uh, so far. Uh, anything else? Yeah, you can give me a call at 877-927-6648. You can email me at path at tfnn.com. And, of course, you can always put in the den. Um, what is pushing Apple? Well, it is that subject that I actually talked about, and that is short interest. Apple has been the highest short interest stock um, pretty much for a while. And uh, like I said, we'll talk about that in the next segment or in the next one after that. Um, I want to get a little history out of the way. Uh, then we'll get into all those things. Talk about the rumor. We'll talk about Apple. That'll probably get us into the bottom of the hour. But uh, what we need to do is a little history before this break. And it's all just a little bit of history repeating. Oh, uh, history doesn't actually repeat, but it does rhyme a lot. On this day in 1963, Alcatraz Prison in San Francisco Bay closes down and transfers its last prisoners. At its peak period in the use in 1950s, The Rock, or America's Deviled Island, Deviled? Devil Island. Deviled is an egg, isn't it? Housed over 200 inmates at its maximum security facility, Alcatraz remains an icon of American prisons for its harsh conditions and record of being inescapable. Um, in the, I'm going to say mid 90s, 95, 96, I ended up spending probably in total maybe three and a half, almost four months uh, in Silicon Valley. Uh, and I ended up renting a houseboat down on Pier 39, uh, over, or looking right out at uh, Alcatraz. Always nice. Went over there a few times, met a couple of people uh, that had actually been in there as inmates uh, that had written books. If you go in there now, I don't know if they still do it because I went over there so many times. I, I really haven't felt about or felt like going back. Uh, but uh, they got a very interesting view of uh, what Alcatraz was like. Um, universally, they all wanted to kill the bird man of Alcatraz. They said he was the worst human being. And, of course, this is the worst of the worst. They said that anybody, that the guards had to watch him extra closely because everybody wanted to kill him. Half the guards and all the inmates, um, which was kind of interesting. Also, um, one guy that I talked to there that had written a book about his time there uh, with Al Capone, saying that the guy was kind of out of his mind when he first showed up. And uh, one guy trying to escape from a, in a steam tunnel, and he, uh, they were going to all escape the next day. One guy went the night before, ended up getting roasted in a steam tunnel before he could escape. Um, and uh, eh, it's kind of interesting to see. People, at least a couple of people, actually came out of Alcatraz, became good members of society. The one guy that I met, uh, his name's Quinlan, actually got a pardon uh, from Ronald Reagan in 1986, became a radiologist, and uh, worked uh, about 35 years and then retired for a hospital there in San Francisco. There is a redemption when we come back. Rumor! An innuendo. The Taz Profile Scanner is the most revolutionary piece of trading software that you will ever try. Wouldn't you like to approach the markets with confidence? As you begin your trading day, it's likely that you'll be faced with lots of decisions. In order to make the best decision, the first thing you'll need is a strategy that will help you minimize your risks. Whether we're in a bull or bear market, a good strategy is to have the tools needed to help you scan and analyze the markets before you trade. The Taz Profile Scanner instantly scans and filters over 2,500 global financial markets, such as stocks, ETFs, commodity futures, and Forex. Headed by Steve Dahl, president of Taz Market Profile, the Taz Profile Scanner understands that in today's technological world, the use of top flight software applications, automated trading algorithms, and technical analysis expertise is essential to successful trading in today's market. Whether you're looking at the trade matrix, the ETF heat grid, 
the market breadth, the landscape charts, or the many other features of the TAS Profile Scanner, this is a piece of software that will revolutionize how you look at the markets and set up your trades. The team at TAS has even put together a 12-part video series to walk you through every aspect of the TAS Profile Scanner, which you can find directly on the TAS Order page at TFNN.com. Sign up now for only $97 a month with a risk-free 30-day trial so you have nothing to lose and everything to gain. See for yourself how you can harness the full power of the TAS Profile Scanner by visiting the front page of TFNN.com today and you'll find the TAS Profile Scanner under the Services section. Remember, with a 30-day money-back guarantee, you have nothing to lose. Don't let another day pass you by without trying out this amazing piece of software that will revolutionize how you look at the market and how you place trades. Sign up today. Many of our new listeners have heard about The Tiger's Den. The Tiger's Den is a a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of the TFNN shows, plus see all of the charts as they happen live and have access to archives of all of those charts. You can test drive the Tiger's Den absolutely free for 30 days and greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets and how to make your money work for you. Details on the Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN has launched our brand new website, you can still visit us at the same TFNN.com URL, but when you do, you'll see a new and improved homepage with a much simpler navigation, whether you're watching Tiger TV live in high definition or just accessing your newsletter subscriptions. We even have new pricing in six months and yearly options. Check out the new TFNN.com now and experience all the upgrades. TFNN.com, educating investors. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. We're back. Uh, yeah, we're at uh, 2854. We'll call it that. Up almost 30 points on the S&P cash. And uh, volume for a 30-point move, about 4 point, man, not even 4.5 billion shares. Again, we're having these big swings. There's not that much juice in it. Um, but again, it may be for a variety of reasons, and we'll talk about that in a minute. But I'm going to say that... Uh, a handful of people getting short stocks that probably shouldn't be sh should have been shorted. I uh, had a uh, conversation with a few folks um, that I know in the industry from Chicago and New York, and they all tell me that they're getting fed this big line today, and that is that uh, the Mueller report will come out tomorrow. It's a giant nothing burger, and because of that, the Chinese have been waiting for the trade deal uh, to see what was going to happen. I mean, if they can, uh, you know, if they can just ignore them and get people that uh, hate Trump to uh, uh, kind of do the uh, sidestep until the next election, maybe they can go four years or drag this thing out. Um, the thought is that there's not going to be any of that. And he certainly is, not, nothing's going to happen to him tomorrow when the Mueller report comes out. And again, don't shoot me. This is just what everybody's pushing. Who knows if it's true? But they're certainly using that to push the market up today, at least from what I hear. So anyway, nothing happened. And of course, then um, maybe the trade deal goes a little farther on. Now we've heard this story and enough wolves, but... You know what? When you got enough people short, and they probably are in the wrong stocks being short, a lot of times these stories, which sometimes made out of entire whole cloth, uh, get people to worry. So we had a, a question in the den about why Apple is going higher, and I wanted to show this because I put it in every uh, the newsletter every single day, which is a chart of the uh, top ten. Um, uh, shorts both in the uh, NASDAQ and the uh, S&P 500. Actually, I got um, 15 in the S&P and the top 10 in the NASDAQ. Uh, but Apple, even yesterday, continued. But it's been um, 
for probably a couple of weeks, maybe the, one of the highest uh, shorted stocks uh, that's been out there. Yesterday, or no, yeah, the day before that, 24% of all the shares were being shorted. Uh, doesn't mean that the uh, shares went home short, but means that during the day that one out of four shares uh, that traded was traded as a short position. But generally does mean that you get a couple, two or three or four days like that, uh, getting out in front of a company that has uh, $250 billion just sitting around. I don't understand the idea of shorting a company that has decent sales and a lot of cash. You want it to uh, go after the stocks uh, that have uh, weak business models, iffy financials, and other big problems. So uh, when I look at Apple, you know, anything probably more than about 15% on a day is a giant red flag. In fact, let me uh, go ahead and do this. Uh, but, you know, I don't know how you short a company. I, I wasn't bullish on the stock, but at some point you have to get bullish because too many people are on the wrong side. Let's take a look at this. Okay. I mean, we've had weeks where this thing actually, I'm going to say, the last 10 trading days where this thing has been almost every day over at least 20%. And that's pretty big on a big stock like this that doesn't have, you know, financials or books that are probably cooked uh, or other issues like that. Uh, so when you ask why it continues to go higher, eh, probably more rumors and a lot of people on the wrong side of a stock that shouldn't be that short. Now, when you look at the buy monthly, I'll show you, maybe you can see it. it. This is my own program, so it's hard to see. We went from one day uh, to cover in Apple in the last reporting period to the end of February from four days. We went from about four, what is that? Uh, da, 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 da. Let me get the digit. 40 million shares short to 97 million shares short. And that's what it's all about. That's why I always publish those uh, short numbers every day of the most heavily hated because if the market goes up, those people are going to be on the wrong side and they get squeezed the, be uh, the most. Now, we're going to go through uh, the most hated stocks today because if we do get another push, there's probably other stocks out there like Apple that over a couple of days or maybe even during the day that you might want to day trade, especially into Friday, if things get going and you got a lot of stocks that are short. Anyway, Apple, maybe one of the most hated stocks over the last couple of weeks. And, you know, it's not like they were going to come out with some kind of announcement uh, that they were, you know, that no one was buying their phones anymore. Uh, they are, they do have at least a kind of array of hope with their new earbuds that are rechargeable. And a lot of people are buying them. Um, kind of planned obsolescence, the old uh, earbuds, the wireless earbuds, the batteries are failing. There's no way to replace them. And people are having to shell out another 200 bucks to get these things. And apparently that's actually been just enough to turn the tables on people that have been way, way, way too short on Apple. I, I mean, from the chart, you look at it and you go, eh, not much happening here. Uh, you certainly, though, wouldn't want to be short when you saw that many people piling on uh, generally, the people uh, that short the most are the people that short at the bottom, uh, right before they get squeezed. Uh, ALGN, which is another one out here that with a mighty shorts on this is kind of popping up today. Not a lot of juice, uh, but uh, certainly you wanted to see at least fill half of that gap that goes back to the 25th of October. Uh, that was eight and a half million shares. Uh, you don't have a lot today, but again, uh, when you got a lot of people piling on uh, short uh, like this, it's not uncommon, uncommon for them to push it as hard as they can. Uh, another one that has been massively shorted has been Advanced Micro. Uh, we got another follow through today, not a lot of uh, volume, certainly not the kind of volume you want to see. You need about 140 million shares and you don't have anything close to that right now. Uh, you might even if you're, you might even want it to see 90 million shares from this gap down 
on the 25th of October. But uh, either way, uh, you wanted a, probably a lot of volume. You want to watch that before the end of the day. But again, I'm not a big fan for shorting a $25 stock. More than likely, it's easy to get, uh, get you squeezed. Another stock that's seen massive shorting, and it is Amazon. Amazon's been bucking it up against this previous high. Wouldn't be surprised to see these guys push a little harder over the next few years, a uh, few days, as it goes up against this November 8th high and the December 3rd high. It's about uh, 1778, both of them. Eh, you might have the volume today. It's not going to be fantastic. Uh, what you have is a lot of people getting short too early and then getting run. We'll be back in a minute. The Path of Least Resistance is David White's daily trading newsletter, and if you're looking for active trading ideas, then now's a perfect time for a 30-day free trial to this powerful daily trading advisory service. David uses his years of trading experience to offer his subscribers his trading ideas each morning in his Path of Least Resistance newsletter. Using a combination of equity trades along with options, David keeps his subscribers up to date with all pertinent market information with intraday afternoon updates when warranted. Don't miss out on this great chance to get a 30-day free trial to David's daily newsletter, The Path of Least Resistance, with no obligation to pay anything. David has been delivering solid recommendations for his subscribers recently, and if you'd like to see the type of newsletter he delivers every morning, then visit the front page of TFNN, and you'll find The Path of Least Resistance under Trading Newsletters. For all the details, and to start your 30-day free trial today, log on to TFNN.com now. Hi folks, Tom O'Brien here. If you'd like to get my daily newsletter, Market Insights, then now is a great time to sign up for a 30-day free trial. Every morning by 9.30, I send out my morning letter to subscribers with market commentary on a variety of markets, currencies, and commodities to keep investors up to date on the day's trading action. Included in Market Insights are specific buy and sell recommendations for stocks, ETFs, and even options, with stops and price targets included for every trade in my newsletter. If you'd like to try my newsletter risk-free for 30 days, then and head over to the front page of TFNN and you'll find Market Insights under Trading Newsletters. I use my years of trading experience to bisect and dissect the market every morning and give my subscribers the most important information they need to know for the day ahead. I even issue afternoon updates for my subscribers whenever warranted with important market action. I'm always scouring the market for the next great trading opportunity. Sign up for your 30-day free trial to my daily newsletter, Market Insights, today by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Wow! Go get them, folks! TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. And we're back. Uh, we're going to go right away to Dave in Framingham. How you Hi, doing? David. How are you? Good. What was that uh, stock that you bought? Bought that was the semi. No, that wasn't me. Wasn't you? Okay. No, I'm looking. Well, maybe at... a month ago or something. No, it's AKS M and the uh, U.S. Steel. I'm looking at here. Okay. That's good. The AKS. Yeah. So what you what are you looking at here? Um, where are we, where are we going? Are we going to get up to the five dollar area? That's what I'm looking at. 
Well, yeah, I think yeah. you do if the trade deal ever gets signed. That's the yeah. issue. Got to just I mean, wait it's, a little. Yeah, it's. I mean, who who can time that? And that's right. the issue, can't right? Time it. Then I got to wait it out, right? And yeah, I just don't know. But right now, I don't think. I mean, you're just going sideways for five days. You got a little pop today. Yeah, right. Uh, right. But you got five. I don't know who in the world is sitting on this. It looks like these somebody thinks that they could go bankrupt. It's got five days to cover on short interest for a two dollar and eighty cent and two eighty five whatever stock. Yeah. I don't know who's this massively short on it. It's uh, d d d what's that? I don't know who's shorting it. Uh, I've 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 read things, but they're making money. They made money. They're making money. Yeah, yeah. But I mean, it's got like fifty five million short, shares short, right? Someone's so gonna have to cover. if it. If yeah, if anything happens on it, this could be a Roman candle. So I could yeah. see maybe putting, uh, treating it more like an option, and okay. just sitting on it. Yeah. I don't see any. I don't see anything in it now. Okay. But you know, all those shorts are there, and if their trade deal comes through, I think it would be pretty good. But I don't know if you have to wait six months or a year. Yeah. Or I think or two I days. Think he's going to do something here shortly. Something's going to. He's. Uh... Something's gonna happen. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I I like this this setup of this. I'm just wondering what the catalyst would be. Catal the best out, one, maybe. the best one I could think about would be a trade deal. Yeah, right. A trade which deal, which yeah. is gonna cut out a lot of Chinese steel and and then these guys will have contracts where they know what's gonna happen. Right? They right. they know that yeah. that U.S. companies can go. Okay, I can give you a contract for the next three years for the steel we need. And I, I yeah. think that would be good. It's just with it being in limbo, it's hard to tell. So, well, they've got, David, they've got fifty percent of the auto market here in the states. Yeah, and you know. if you can't make any money, it's not how much you sell; it's how much you keep, right? Yeah. And if, yeah. if the Chinese are out there dumping all the time, which is what yeah. they do to try to bankrupt these uh, bankrupt our U.S. Uh, businesses. I mean, they've got two reasons to do it. One, they like to do it just so that it can keep their businesses growing over there. And two, uh, militarily, they don't like us having a lot of uh, ability to make steel here in the U.S. either. They love to see us uh, basically without the ability uh, to build new stuff if yeah. they decide to ever invade Taiwan or something. So I, I like the setup. I just don't know how you time it. Um, yeah, you should you know wait the, it out, I guess, because they need you know to happen earnings, here. You know when earnings is on it? Uh, the 29th, I believe. Of, of April? Uh, April? Right. Uh, what is this? AKS. Let's make sure about that. Okay, 29th of April is right. You know, I, th I, think, yeah. I think the play would be to probably just sit on it. Yeah. And, and if you get to the 29th, and you know you haven't got a pro, you haven't got a, a profit. Um, just get out of it. Yeah. And then you know wait the day after if the earnings are okay, you go right back into it. I don't want to, wouldn't want to roll the dice on earnings. But uh, what's today? The twenty first. So it gives you be fun, four uh, or five I weeks. Gonna, yeah, I think I think there's going to be some fun buying here going into the last week of March also. Isn't this yeah, I don't. I don't know how much they're going to want to jump yeah, on this grenade. Know. Yeah, I mean, the fun guys would much rather buy this thing at four bucks, knowing that everything's done, than right. try to to buy a flyer yeah. on it at two eighty. Okay, they're not. They're not the biggest risk takers in the world. Right. And two, if you remember what I said about funds and ten dollars. Right. 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 Uh, for those people that are new. Basically, a lot of funds can't own stocks below ten dollars. It's in their charters, so you've got to find some people that, you know, that can buy it. And again, the the big money generally made once it gets to ten dollars, and the uh, funds can then make it. Then it goes from ten to twenty. So if you can get into it and hold it, yeah. if it does well, but I I don't know. I think kind of a roll of the dice out here. If you treat it like an option. A, a non-expiring option. Right. Uh, that means that you don't go in large, right? You 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 put a, a sum in it, but maybe a half or a quarter position and just sit on it. 
But uh, that would be yeah. the way that I would look at it. I I can see all the all the the uh, issues here that could make it roll. I can't see a lot of things that drive it below two bucks. So, yeah. David, I mean, what about uh, U.S. Steel? How's that chart look? It looks like it went down to around nineteen and change. We talked about that, I believe. It's back US, up over twenty. What's the symbol on it? U.S. Steel X. 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 Yeah. You were bigger than like? U.S. Steel. Okay. It looks kind of the same thing. Let's look and see what it looks like. I mean, the big difference here is that funds could buy it. It's a $20 stock, right? Right. So that that gets you out here. Eh, short interest is, hadn't been high in this. Let's see what it is. Yeah, this one doesn't have much in the way of short interest at all. Uh, and it's actually gone down. So if you were looking for the rocket ship, I'd like, having less money in AK uh, Steel than I do in X. You probably have a better chance of making a little money in X. You probably have a better chance of making a lot of money in AK Steel. Yeah, yeah. If I was gonna handicap yeah. both of them. But yeah, yeah. I, like I said, <laughs> the only problem is you just probably don't wanna be in these things on earnings day. Yeah, David, can you take one more here? Yeah, let's go ahead. Yeah, David, the S&P we talked about, uh, could it reach the October top, the high it's, there? It, it certainly could. It could go you, up there on no volume. Yesterday, I believe that it, yeah. it could do it in a matter of four or five days. Could it yeah, do that and, here? Yeah, I mean, we could do it by Monday or Tuesday. It could be done. Right. Oh, yeah, it could be done, and it could go it, up there. Now, the question is no volume. No volume, now, right. Say, yeah, what's it, say it goes up there on no volume, and then you right. ring the bell. That tells you one thing, which is going to be that you're going to have a, a – long, long-term high put in it, you might be in the in a very bearish market. If it goes up there, rings the bell on volume, then, you know, maybe that, maybe you're looking more like 3,500, excuse me, 3,500, yeah, um, in the S&P. So, yeah. if, I mean, th this is a market that's kind of balanced on the edge of a razor. I had a short position, I was basically, eh, Glad in. I got out because I just don't know. Yesterday would have been fine. Then I started wondering what was going on this morning. Started seeing all those rumors. I mean, the rumor mill, uh, it's not in overdrive. It's like uh, in gone plat. Okay. We'll be back in a minute. Okay. Thank you, David. You bet. If you are in the CD market and looking for a secure investment, the Tiger First Mortgage Program may work for you. The security for these first mortgages are building lots in the Tax Opportunity Zone in St. Petersburg, Florida. The Tax Act of 2018 set up tax-free zones across the country where you can build and hold for 10 years and pay no tax on the profits, which makes these lots valuable. The investment is anywhere from $30,000 to $75,000. The interest paid is 7% yearly paid on a monthly basis. According to Bankrate.com, the best rate for a four-year CD in the country as of February 20th is 3.1%. A $50,000 investment at a normal four-year CD rate of 3.1% would give you income of $1,550 per year or $6,200 over the four-year period. That same $50,000 investment in the Tiger First Mortgage Program would give you $3,500 per year or $14,000 over the four years. Which would you prefer, $6,200 or $14,000 of interest on your investment? If you would like more information about the Tiger First Mortgage Program, you can call me at 877-518-9190. That's 877-518-9190. If you haven't checked out the newsletters page of TFNN.com, what are you waiting for? All of the TFNN newsletters are informative, up-to-date, affordable, and a must-have for every trader looking to gain a competitive informational edge in today's markets. TFNN newsletters cover every aspect of the markets to offer you the very latest in market news. Plus, new subscribers get to test drive our newsletters risk-free for 30 days. From all aspects of the markets, including stocks, bonds, metals, commodities, and tech, there's a newsletter to fit your needs exclusively from TFNN. Stay informed each day you trade and get that competitive edge that will help you stay ahead of the game. Visit our newsletters page by going to TFNN.com and click the newsletters button near the top of the page. 
TFNN.com, educating investors. Will the S&P 500 continue to climb? For bold trades on U.S. large cap stocks in either direction, trade SPXL, SPUU, or SPXS. Direction's daily S&P 500 bull and bear leveraged ETFs. Direction leveraged ETFs. An investor should carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risks, charges, and expenses before investing. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a fund's prospectus and summary prospectus, call 866-476-7523 or visit directioninvestments.com. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor for Side Fund Services, LLC. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV for the latest market information. Uh, we're going to go to Nike with the earnings, I think, at, after the bell tonight. Uh, let's just make sure about that. But I think that is it. Yep. Yep. After the bell tonight. Um, Nike has a very low 1% one per, you know, one, percent, um, one day to short. So there's not, if it does go higher. I don't think it's because it's got a, a ton of shorts out there. Um, you've got um, it breaking the previous high of September 21st, 85.82, 14 million shares. Got into that a couple of days ago with 6.6 .6 million shares. There hadn't been any real energy up here at the top. Um, I think the risk reward's pretty horrible on this. That is, you don't have a lot of shorts. If they whiff, they're not going to be there to buy on the way down. Uh, and uh, if you do go higher, there's not going to be that much to squeeze on the way higher. Uh, other companies in this footwear space have not been doing well. And the question is whether or not Nike just had enough uh, dough to make the books look good yet another quarter last time. And this is when it catches up. I don't like flipping a coin here. Uh, a lot of these stocks look like they could go, you know, you can make and drag out maybe six months or nine months or even a year if you continue to, to work hard on the books. And I don't know, it just doesn't seem like, at least the people I see out and about anymore, not that many people buying Nike shoes. Uh, the death of the mall kind of hurting them a bit uh, where people used to go and buy them. I mean, they still buy them, but it's not like uh, you won't go buy a uh, Foot Locker that many more times or many of the other ones. Uh, that are selling the shoes. So it, I, I think it was, uh, if I remember right, this the tennis shoe business is kind of a, uh, about 50% an impulse buy, and they used to make a lot of money for those mall stores where people just don't go anymore. And uh, sports uh, viewership kind of down too, which also makes it an issue. I don't know. I don't like being long. I certainly wouldn't be short. And uh, I think that's about it. Now we've got a couple other ones out here. Another one, uh, CZR. Caesars Entertainment. Now this is a, uh, I, I assume this is what you're looking at. Um, man, is this a stock that's been horrible for forever. And I, I brought this up on the show when these guys uh, IPO'd. They IPO'd with 4.2% of the shares out, uh, outstanding for the float. And these guys have been selling and selling and selling into this for forever to get all those shares out and cash back into the company. I haven't looked at what it is now, but I know this is like one of those trees that you go up and you hit and it's the ants have eaten the insides out. It's always been one of these sliver deals. And I'm going to say that the, uh, 
95% of these sliver deals end up blowing up in somebody's faces. Eventually, um, they can't, the, the financials don't carry it. Um, you know, I don't know that much about Las Vegas. I know that it has been fairly good out there, uh, but I don't know if, if it's big at Caesars anymore. The other big uh, hotels doing well. Um, is it going to do horrible? No. Is it probably going to blow up in your face? Next couple of days, the answer is no either. I just don't see where this thing ever really goes and does much anything. Let's go back a handful of years. I mean, it got up to fourteen fifty, but I think it came out at like 10 bucks. And let's go back even a little bit farther here. See what I got. Never did anything. I think, it, I think they ran some kind of scam to get it up to this $26.74 high. They got a bunch of people short. And then they started letting all the shares come back in. And that's how this thing got back down to $3.20. But heavily manipulated stock. Uh, this last run from the February 1st, a high of 2018. Absolutely uh, massive uh, volume and getting out back down to 5 84. Just one I know, not the, the amount of people going in the front door of this place, but the way that this stock has been operated, I just don't know how you can do anything with it. They, they are all over this. And uh, if you think that they think that your money is their money in Las Vegas, just wait until you buy their stock. But I, I kind of vaguely remember this whole thing uh, being uh, uh, jiggered up to get it up to that February 28th high. So it's just one that I won't touch because I always know that there's something going on and it's very easy for whoever's the stock operator in this one to really push it around. Um, uh, okay. What else do we have? Oh, we wanted to look at more short stocks. Okay, so we got that done. Okay. We got that. Okay. Let's uh, go ahead and uh, move on to some of the stocks that I wanted to look at. Um, as we said, I was talking about um, the rail companies and uh, looking at whether or not they can do uh, anything up here and talking about Greenbrier the last week. What is that, GBX? We'll look at that in a minute. Um, one of the most hated stocks, massive shorting, has been CSX. Um, generally, the problem with uh, shorting a company like this, uh, which had a 20%, almost 20% short uh, int uh, move on it yesterday, um, is that you reverse that. It's not as bad as others. It's got three days to cover with, uh, two, 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 two. what is this? 12.7 million shares short. Uh, energy's about the same on the way up. Let's take a look at that GBX. We talked about this one making a fairly... Let's go back here a little. Uh, make it, trying to make some kind of low out here on no volume. Got about 800,000 shares in two previous January 10th low and the uh, December 24th low, a little under, eh, a little under, a uh, low 800s, let's call it that. Uh, went below it with 336,000 shares. Little reversal today, but no volume in at 112. You need this to close back above 37.95. 37.44, either one of those. Uh, so you still have a little ways to go. I guess you can say that as long as this thing hasn't broken uh, those previous lows today, this is just low volume. A pop back into that trading range would be good and kind of tell you that maybe CSX is ready for a little short covering. Let's take a look at HOG. Um, another one with massive shorts on it. Oh. We're going to go to the break. We'll be back in a minute. We'll take a look and see how bad it is. Oh, look at this. 11 days to cover in Harley-Davidson. If everybody had to get out that was short, it would take them 11 days 
of just the average volume of the last 30 days. We'll be back in a minute. I'm certain you are or strive to be one of the best of the best at everything you do in life. It's the most common trait that we tigers and tigresses share. If you're looking to become the best of the best when it comes to managing your money, let me teach you to do what most wealth managers tell you can't be done, which is how to time the markets. I'm Steve Rhodes, author of Mastering Probability, and for the last 12 months, Timer Digest has been tracking my newsletter signals, which have earned me the ranking as their number one market timer in the nation for the S&P 500 for the last 12, six, and three months. Timer Digest also ranks me as the number one market timer for gold as well. The fact is, markets can be timed, and I'll teach you the exact set of tools that I use that has transformed me into one of the best at what I do. Sign up for Mastering Probability today by clicking on the newsletter tab on the homepage of TFNN.com and get immediate access to workshops where I take you step-by-step -step how to use an extraordinary set of tools as well as provide great market calls too. Sign up today. David White's newsletter, The Technology Insider, is focused like a laser on finding the next big things in technology. If you had invested only $10,000 in Microsoft in 1986, you'd have been a millionaire by 2000. Disruptive technology like Microsoft's is the key to these massive long-term profits, and The Tech Insider is the vehicle from TFNN to capitalize on these opportunities. This is the go-to newsletter that identifies, monitors, and profits on mostly little-known cutting-edge companies with great long long term prospects. David's experience is as an inventor of Emmy winning animation products for TV and Hollywood that propelled a company public. Match that with 14 years as a full time trader, and he's uniquely qualified to guide you through the light speed world of ever evolving high tech. If you're ready to ride the next big technology bull market for less than $40 per month, log on to TFNN.com and get your two week free trial to the Technology Insider. Get in on the ground floor of the next big thing today. Since 1984, Basil Chapman has been using the Chapman Wave methodology to advise traders of his expert market opinion. While originally hand-drawing charts from the late 1970s into the 1980s, Basil noticed that prices under most circumstances virtually always had a certain number of legs to the upside before declining sharply. Later, Basil found that computer software, which included the standard market technical indicators, enhanced the degree of accuracy in calling price turns, as well as market trend calls. Thus was born the Chapman Wave sequence. Using the Chapman Wave methodology along with other indicators, Basil Chapman advises his subscribers of his expert market opinion each market day with his opening call newsletter. Right now, you can get a two-week free trial to the opening call, Basil's daily trading newsletter, by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Cancel at any time during that trial and pay absolutely nothing. Get your two-week free trial to Basil's newsletter, The Opening Call, today by visiting TFNN.com. Catch Tom O'Brien professional trader and educator, founder of TFNN, also a special guest on CNBC. Tom will bisect and dissect the markets. The Tom O'Brien Show, next on TFNN. And we're back. I uh, have an uh, email coming in from Eric across the Ethernet. Um, looks like they worked out lithium uh, issue in China. Great show. Um, I would be wary of believing that there's a huge problem getting uh, rare earth minerals. We've been through this and to that already before with MCP. Rare earths are not rare. They are just in light concentrations. If you can get 5% somewhere then you can mine it and make some money it's not that it didn't somewhere else at three and a half percent or two and a half percent in fact i think there's a big bunch of it here in the united states at about three or four percent but because of course of environmental laws can't actually mine it here in the united states it's just not worth it um so the question uh is uh what on this one um I mean, you got 120, 110 EVs that are going to come out. I just don't know if the market hasn't been saturated already by Tesla. And now uh, a ton of these cars are going to come in uh, over the next year. I think some of them are going to sell good. The Porsche Taycan looks very good. 
Uh, the uh, uh, Hyundai Kona looks very good um, on the lower end. Uh, but, I mean, there's so many of them. There's a couple of uh, trucks that Amazon's invested uh, in pickups that looks pretty cool. Um, but uh, that's it. Um, let's take a look at Lit real quick, which is the lithium ETF. I don't see anything in that one right now to say higher or lower. You got a little bounce in this, but again, no volume in this. And I think you're really going to have to see these cars go into production, uh, which is going to be probably mid-summer. Eh, maybe it's just the timing, but I think maybe you got another month or so to go before lithium, maybe two months to go before lithium really gets moving. In the meantime, sell when you can, not when you have to. We'll see you here tomorrow.